guys welcome back this is just a very quick video that I'm gonna throw in here real fast because well a couple things I talked about a dedicated work area and how important that is this is where I take my pictures so I've got kind of a far away shot here um, but this is the workbench that I use for taking my photographs and I'm just rebuilding it it's actually supposed to have there's another cabinet that goes behind this. I just put this up really quick so I could take some pictures because we're just kind of moving this office back in and rebuilding the office right now um, in these current days. But so you'll see, um, you'll see before and after. But basically, this is the area. I have a ring light. I have my camera right now sitting on the ring light. But I wanted to show you the things that I picked up today really quick and show you where the photographs are taken. Now, the other thing about this area, that this is going to be a dedicated workspace for shipping as well. So this rolls up. This is a foam um, piece that I got at Michael's. This rolls up, so you can just roll it up when you're not taking pictures. I have a little ribbon, I tie it in a bundle, and it sits up on top of the cabinet that's gonna be up there, and I'll show you guys that again in a week or so when it's actually put back up. And then this is the shipping table as well. And I have drawers down below, and this is where I've got a couple scales over here. So this is where all the shipping is gonna happen as well. So this is basically photographs and shipping, and that's all it's for. And a big, a big piece of this that I've learned from daily refinement is when you end it for the day, you, you set it. For the next person or the next day so it's always set to go so you go in you do what you're doing you finish what you're doing and then you set it to go for the next day or the next person if you have another person that's working with you um, I currently don't but I will <laughs> so this is what I got today and the whole idea here is that I do want to show you guys before I list things what I got what I paid and what I think I can get for them so this is just gonna be a really quick video and again these videos are all going to be raw and unedited because I'm just not going to take the time to edit. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit really quick and show you what I did. Okay, I picked up this Pyrex measuring cup. I really like it because it's a read from the inside. I paid $4.49 for that guy and that sells for about $20. So my profit on that one's going to be $15.51. Then I found this little teapot and cup set. This is not marked. So it's not marked, but I looked online and these little sets go anywhere from $20 to hundreds of dollars. I don't think this is anything particularly special. So I'm going to actually list it for $25 and I will make a profit of $20.53 on those. Okay, this little globe here is really pretty. This is a little paperweight globe. It's really gorgeous. Had all has all this inlaid stone. It's really nice paperweight. It does come with a box. The box is a little is a little worn. So I'm actually going to photograph it and list it separate without the box. The box is going to go in as a bonus, but I'm going to list it for forty dollars. They sell anywhere from forty to eighty. I'm going to list it on the low end, but I'm just going to pay six forty nine for that. So that would give it uh, give us a profit of thirty three fifty one on the globe. Okay, this little teacup and saucer, I haven't cleaned it yet. Paid three forty nine for it. They sell for about well, people have them listed for up to seventy dollars. There's not a lot of them selling. They're selling for around forty. So this one could sell for forty dollars paid three forty nine so that would give me a profit of thirty six fifty one on this guy now this one I should have done a little more homework in the store this is a Royal Albert it's beautiful I paid three forty nine for the set there's a few of them listed and I didn't look at the comps on how many had actually sold so there's there's a lesson you know do as I say not as I do <laughs> sometimes it's hard when you're in the store it's just hard to look up the comps and that's how you end up with a death pile, and this is how this ends up in a death pile, and maybe redonated to a thrift store or drop so low that someone just can't, you know, they just can't pass it up. But technically, I'm going to list it for twenty dollars. If it sold for twenty dollars, I'd make sixteen fifty one. But uh, yeah, doubtful. Honestly, it's doubtful on that. 
Okay, these green mugs I got for 49 cents a piece. They sell for about $10 a piece. So I'm gonna list them for the set is for $20. We would make 1902 on those. Okay, now these anchor, this set here, this is all anchor hawking. This is called Manhattan. It is the pattern of anchor hawking. And I had never actually seen it before, so I really gravitated towards it. That's one thing I do. When I see something I've never seen before, I'm, I, I grab it and look it up because I've been in a lot of thrift stores and antique stores over the last you know, five decades. And if I haven't seen it, I'm curious. So I just don't recall this one. So I picked them up, took a look. These six inch plates here, this set of four should sell for $25. I paid $1.96 for those. So we would make $23.04 on those plates. Okay, the, I have notes here. I looked at the thing before I did this. The cream and sugar, these would be the highest ticket items of the bunch. And that would be of these two. I found one set that has sold in the pink depression glass. I did not find the clear. I'm gonna price these high. I'm gonna price this set at $50 and I'm gonna see what happens. Because I think if someone has the Manhattan set, they probably don't have the cream and sugar. I think it's going to be a highly desirable addition to a collection. And I think I might get it. So I'm going to list those at 50. If I get that 50 for them, I'm going to make 4802 on that as a profit. Now the berry bowls are not they're not uncommon but they're not they're not common either so there's regular berry bowls without handles so i would list these at forty dollars for the set ten dollars a piece and the profit on those would then be 37.24 the candle holders are for one they're mismatched these are plain there's no design in the center this one has a design and i noticed that when i got it out of the store so they're not exactly the same but they are both Manhattan. So I would list each of those for $5 and the profit on those would be $4.31 a piece. Okay, this set of plates here. These are, these are just kind of okay. I probably should have left them in the store, but I grabbed them. They were 69 cents. I grabbed them because it was a set. I'm gonna put the set up for $10. I think someone might grab it as a set. Worst case scenario. I'll put plants on them, but I'm going to list this for $10 for the set, and in that case, I would make $8.62 on those. They might go. They might go. And then these two glasses I picked up, these are Nortaki. These are, a, this is a iced tea glass, this blue swirl. I've not seen many of these in the past. This is one of those things that if somebody has a set of these and one got broken, they're going to be looking for replacements. There's one of, uh, this is seven and a half inch here. And then this one is six and three quarters, I think, or six and six and almost seven inches. It's not much smaller, but I would list each of these for $8 a piece. So they'll, they'll each go up for $8, or I may just list the set for 16 and the profit on those would then be 15 or two. So if all of these items that I picked up did sell for the prices that I looked at them. And some of them I actually did kind of kind of lowballed a few of them. A couple of my oh went higher for definitely went higher on these. But um some of them I definitely lowballed. The teapot I did, the green mugs I did, the globe I did, the teacups, we'll see what happens with those. If they all sold for those prices, then our profit would be $282.15. I take 40% right off the top, as explained in my first video. I take 20% for fees, and I will drill down on those numbers uh, as time goes on and, and get a real accurate number as to how much I really am paying in fees, but I'm calculating 20% right now in fees, and then I'm calculating another 20% for income taxes. So at the end of every month, I take 20% of my total sales put that away for income taxes for the end of the year. So I have that in the bank. So that would leave me a profit of 169.27 on these items that I picked up today, if they sold for those prices. So that is a really quick video there on what those items are. I do have 
Um, I'm going to do a little jewelry video. I actually did it. I thought I uploaded it, but I did not. So I will do that again before I list that jewelry because I want to show you guys everything that I'm listing before I list it so you can actually follow it on the site and see it, what it did sell for and if it did sell for that. And then a little FYI, the first four items that went live just in the last four days, that was after my store had been stagnant for months and had absolutely no activity on my store at all. So I listed four items, went live, and then I got an offer on a piece of jewelry that's been sitting stagnant for months. So, so far, that does say that it's, it's kicking the activity to my store up because I have, I think, about 50 items listed, but they're just stagnant. They've just been, they're sitting there. So they're not getting pushed up in the algorithm and they're not being seen by anyone because if your store isn't active, eBay is not going to push it forward. So that's just the way it works that if there's activity on your store as far as items being listed and sold and activity, then eBay will, their algorithm is set that it will then push your listings up so people actually see them. I don't think anyone's even been seeing my listings for months now until just the last couple of days. So I did have an offer come in on a piece of jewelry I had listed for $55. I had an offer come in at $45 and I'm going to go ahead and take it. Um, and then these guys will get listed too. So thanks for watching this one. See you on the next one. Okay, so I have a little add on here. I went ahead and took some pictures of some of these items and it made me think of a couple of things I wanted to cover. Um, so I have a ring light here and so good lighting is important. And then a nice background obviously is as well. I get a, I take a picture of all angles of my item. So I get the top, the bottom, the sides. I always get a measurement and I put that in my photographs. So that's really important is to have, have a ruler so that you can have a measurement in your photograph so people can see exactly what the size is. If there's anything about it that's odd, you really want to point that out. You can take a pen, you can point to it or point to it with your finger as far as whatever the problem is. If there's anything at all, so it's like, you know, full disclosure that there's something about the piece that might be off a little inclusion or whatever. And the other thing that I do, and this is just a little hint for you, is that I, I always have a scale right there. And so I take a picture, I throw my item on the scale, and I take a picture of that as well. And then that way, when I'm writing my ad, because what I do, the way I do it, and everybody does it different, but the way I do it is this, because I use my iPhone. I come out here, I take all my pictures first. So those are loaded on my iPhone, they're ready to go. Then I go in, on my computer and I look for my ad and what I tend to do is I will go in and I will look for an item that's already sold and I will do a sell similar and the reason I do that is because it will then populate all of the information so say for instance this particular glass if that glass is if you do a sell similar and it's the exact same size then it's going to have a lot of the details are going to be filled in as far as the height, um, the color, where it was manufactured. Certain things like that are going to be in there. And of course, you want to check them all, but it's going to, the work's going to basically be done for you if you do a sell similar. And it's an ad that someone already wrote properly, apparently, because it was found and purchased. So I said that in this first video, and I'm going to say this again. I never use an ad that's live. I never use a sell similar to an active listing. I only use sell similar from listings that have already sold. Okay. Because I just kind of feel like that's cheating in a way. If somebody has an, if I have an active listing on this glass and someone comes in and I've done all the work and I've listed everything and mine is up there and listed and someone comes in and they do a sell similar on my active listing. I kind of feel like that's cheating because then they are my competition at that point in time. So I just don't do that to other sellers. That's just me, but that's just the way I do it is I will look for a sold item. I will do a sell similar, but I won't be someone's competition. If I'm going to basically use their ad as a template, I will do it after they've already sold their item. Okay. I just, that's, that's just me, but that's what I do. So that's what I recommend. Also, 
always use your own photographs. Don't ever use stock photographs on eBay. Stock photographs will get you thrown off of eBay, first off. So, and secondly, you don't want to use someone else's photographs because they've done the work. It's like you really need to do, you need to do your own work as far as your photographs go. And stock photographs will get you into trouble, so don't use those. So those are two, two hints there as far as ads. But then while you're taking your photos, I always throw it on the scale so that I have my weight. Because then what I do is I go in, I find my ad, and I do a cell similar, and I already have my photographs. Then I, then I will go in on my phone, I'll pull up my drafts, and then I'll load my pictures into it, and then I'll fine tune it. I'll look at all of the information, make sure that everything's correct, and get ready for shipping. Now when I have a picture of my item in my string of pictures, so I'll do my pictures, I'll do top, bottom, measurements, everything, and then the last picture of that item is it sitting on the scale. That way when I'm sitting there and I'm actually writing my ad, I already know, okay, this is going to go, this is probably going to go in a 9 by 9 by 9 box, and now I know the weight of it because it's in my photographs. Um, just remember to take that picture out before you actually list your ad. Uh, it's just for your reference when you're writing the ad and then delete it before you actually publish your ad. But those were two shipping tips that I forgot to mention and so those are now in there. All right, see you on the next one.